Hello guys, it's Ryan Ho, back with another video. Today I want to talk about the practical experience from upgrading from the iPhone 12 to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, I'm just gonna go a quick rundown of what the actual experience is from my actual real world experience of using the new iPhone and talk about, you know, what to expect. All right, so let's talk about the experience of upgrading from the iPhone 12 to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So obviously the most notable change is the bigger cameras. So the bigger cameras are honestly a godsend. Honestly notice how much better your background blur is. That's just very natural fall off from the bigger sensor when you're taking photos in low light. They're also sharper because they can handle higher ISOs. And the last thing as well is that it has a 48 megapixel camera on the new phone for the main camera. So you're getting extra high resolution and you're also able to shoot better video as well. So you can shoot raw video on the new iPhones. And I was playing around with it and honestly it looks really good if you want to edit. I was actually considering shooting some YouTube videos with it. I just, you know, haven't had enough time to play around with how I want to set up my microphone and my angles. But I'm definitely going to try that in the near future. And yeah, overall the camera is really nice. I mean, it's kind of crazy that you get the kind of 5x zoom. So if you kind of take a look at the extra wide angle into the 24 millimeter into the... 5x zoom you get a lot of range with that it literally goes from ultra wide to 120 millimeters which is insane now taking a closer look at both phones one of the things that you notice is that the new iphone has the always on display which is something that is kind of cool however i also do find that it's kind of bright when you're trying to sleep at night so i ended up turning it off but at the same time, I do think it's kind of cool that we kind of have this. It also shows your notifications and stuff below if you wanted it. Now, if we move to the side, you can actually see that we have that new action button. So my action button is actually kind of connected to my camera nowadays. So if I push this, it'll go straight into your camera and you can take videos and such as that. I mean, I think for most people, they're probably gonna use the camera or they're going to probably use silent mode as like the fault. I think those are the most practical use cases. The other ones, I mean, they're cool, but like, do you really need, you know, a magnifying or fast flashlight or any of the other settings? Like honestly, probably not. Now the other feature on the new iPhone is of course the USB-C. Then the new USB-C is very useful. You can honestly put a lot of different accessories on there. So I actually connected it to my PC. I connected it to like a docking station and basically use this as a gaming device because you could kind of hook it up to USB-C hubs onto your TV and then you could connect an Xbox controller onto the phone and play with it. So there's a lot of cool things you can do. You can also, you know, connect an external drive to take your videos or just transfer files through USB-C. I already have those lying around for my main camera, so I could just repurpose that for the iPhone. So. Honestly, the USB-C is really nice and you have a bunch of cables already lying around in the house to kind of use it to charge and transfer your data. So it's a really nice change for the new iPhone. So let's also talk about kind of the upgrade in the size and the battery, right? So getting used to a bigger phone was honestly not bad at all. I got used to it in literally a day. And although it is a little harder to navigate, I just find myself kind of holding the phone more like on the back and kind of sliding it up and down if I can't reach the top corner. And I found that feels pretty nice, to be honest. So I didn't really have an issue with that. The battery life on the newer iPhones are also a lot better. They're more power efficient. And because it has a bigger battery, because it's a bigger phone, I basically don't run a battery at all in a day. And I'm able to play a lot of games on it. So if you play games like Genshin Impact on the new iPhone, it's able to kind of sustain the higher frame rates a lot better as well as because you have the new 120 hertz screen, you're able to play your games at 120 FPS, which is really cool. And the other thing is the graphics is always at max because you know it's really good. You can also do it on the old iPhone, but I found that the 12 seemed to throttle pretty quick. I think after about like 10, 12 minutes, I basically started lagging. Versus this one, if you have this, 
it doesn't lag to like 30 minutes and really if you don't have a case on it it cools the phone a lot better and faster without the case so i would definitely take the case off if you're playing a lot of games on it and really it doesn't lag when you take off the case so i find it really really nice that you know you're able to sustain really high frame rates and play high quality games on there without kind of lagging i think that was the big issue with this phone of course your phone does of course get hot while you're doing that but you know, I want to stress that the 120 hertz screen on the newer ones, not just for gaming, but just navigating through your kind of windows and the animations and everything, it feels really, really good. That's something I like about the newer phones, that faster screen just makes everything look so much more fluid and nice. The last thing I want to talk about is the screen and the screen brightness, as well as the notification. The newer iPhones can get up to 2000 nits of brightness which basically means you can, you know, look at your screen outside in a really bright sunny day and actually see your screen. That's an issue I had with the iPhone 12, which was always kind of annoying versus this new one. I can actually see outside as well as it can sustain the high brightness for longer periods of time as well. Because after a while, if your phone gets hot, it kind of dims the display, but it seems to sustain it a lot more on the newer iPhone. Now the notification center on this is really cool. If you kind of set like a timer or some type of actions for your app, you can see how the top kind of interacts with you. And I just find that whole entire notification to be very useful that the old phone really just didn't have at all. And I feel like that detailed information up top, no matter what app you're using, whether you're playing music or using timer app, really is just very useful. And I just found myself really liking that kind of refinement on this. You know, it goes without saying as well for the iPhones, the newer one has the titanium finish as well as the titanium corners. So it should be more sturdy in the kind of frame and more resistant to scratching as well. So that's kind of nice that they have upgraded the materials on that. The iPhones themselves look, I mean, kind of similar, honestly, they don't really change that much over time. So in conclusion, I do think moving to the 15 Pro Max was a wonderful experience. I really like the new cameras. I think they look so much better. And the other thing is the 120 Hertz screen is just a joy to use. And the fact that you get that brighter screen and the ability to kind of play your games for longer because the heat dissipation and the efficiency is higher on these new phones. So, you know, I overall really like that experience about this new phone. And those are kind of the major things that I saw. So you guys should definitely like and subscribe to not miss out on more tech videos from me. And yeah, until next time guys, bye.